Let's do Navy veteran reacts to JT suits. Navy sailors can't have PTSD. Yo, 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 yo's. Dude, I used to be a beast with yo-yos in like middle school. I'd build like some cool, like, you know, Papa, come here. Let me show you my yo-yo skills, boy. Come here. I'm going to yo-yo that ass. My wife just bought me a yo-yo for Christmas, actually. Come here, boy. <laughs> this guy. You have one job. I'm going to push you off the couch. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Yo, what up? So, uh, this... Dude, he moved couches. Hey, you get back over here. I need you. No, I need you. Come here. It's okay. Come here, Pop. I won't mess with you. Come here, Pop. Come here, boy. Dang it, I think we lost him. Come here, Pop. Come here. I know you can do it. Give me a kiss. Yes. Go, boy. Yes. We got him back. We got him back. Intro. That's a good, solid intro. But anyway, so there's... I go on Reddit. All right, guys. I want to play that whole intro because uh, I, I, want to, I want to show you... He's being very open, okay? He's being very open, Uh and, and transparent about what's going on in his life, which I think is really cool. I appreciate it. If you guys want to go show him some love, I'm sure you guys know who he is. Go over to JT Suits and just say, hey, appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for keeping it up. Thanks for uh, being brave out there and putting yourself out there on the internet. It's a, it's a, it takes a lot of courage to talk about your problems in the hopes that it helps somebody else. We do it here on the Scuttlebush Show all the time. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Reddit, the website, the subreddit for the Navy and the military subreddits. Just like to stay up to date and yaddy, uh, whatnot. And dude, uh, this chief, there's like a chief or senior chief that made a video and he's like really well loved, man. He's like, yo, uh, PTSD, sailors can get PTSD too, or something. And I'm like, dude, I've been talking about that too. Or no, I've been talking about like my stuff, right? What I've been, uh, just, like I was talking about last week, right? Like my PTSD, I think, or OCD, or what was I talking about? I've been talking about things lately. And this chief made that big Reddit post. And, but he was talking to get, so he was saying like, um, sailors can get it from loud noises or something. Like just from like regular working sailors, like a uh, yeoman or, you know, yeoman, LS's people that always are inside the ship. He's like, yo, they can get PTSD from like all the from just living on the ship. And I'm like, bet. I okay. I can see that, dude. So like he he and a lot of people were everyone was like mostly agreeing with him, dude. And I'm like, okay. Now I even I feel hard, I feel weird talking about it. And I had the most dangerous one of the most dangerous jobs in the whole Navy. Working on the like my job specifically, it's really not many people can relate to LSEs and to Hilo, uh, Hilo people on the aircraft carrier flight deck. All right, let me talk about that really quick. So first of all, he is, uh, like I said, it's important to watch what he's doing here, right? Because he is expressing a lot of. I'm not. A th I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. But you can see he's expressing a lot of kind of what's going on in his mind with just the way he's talking to the camera, uh, really letting people in. He's very, very, you know extroverted dude online. He always has been like this, but you can see he's like going through a lot of stuff. He's being very, very open about very personal stuff. Now he talks about, uh, he talks about LSEs, right? That's what that stands for is landing signalman enlisted. What, what LSEs do, I'm, I, I don't think he expands on it too much here, but basically what an LSE does is there somebody who is responsible for helping helicopters take off and land on a ship. They look around the flight deck and they say, go to the right, go to the left, land, take off, uh, move backwards, move forwards. Um, and they salute the you know aircraft as it flies away. They work extremely hard, extremely long hours. Every helo has to have an LSE when it uh, is taking off and landing. And on an aircraft carrier, helo ops are the most busy ops that go on during the flight schedule because helos take off first before any planes do, and they land last after the last after the last uh, uh, 
you know, what if it's not a helo, like any fixed wing plane that lands. They do this because helos are the primary response for any type of crash or ejection. So like if a pilot crashes or ejects or somebody goes overboard from the flight deck because they get blown over by jet wash or something like that, helos respond and do the, conduct the rescue. So they don't want there to be any delay in the rescue because like we talked about on yesterday's episode, and again, if you miss any of these episodes, they're on the, on the podcast, uh, somebody can disappear quickly into the water. So LSEs work extremely hard all day long, nonstop. Uh, if there's a helo in the air, taking off land and getting fuel, whatever it is, LSEs are working. And that's what he's saying he did. And it's a very dangerous job because you're standing there on the flight deck, in the rotor wash. A lot of things can happen. I'll tell you a couple of things that I've seen happen. And it is, it's, it's just grueling, grueling. It's like we're up there as much as the ABHs and the ABEs, if not more, because of our flight schedule. We have the longest flight schedule. So we're up there more. And we're in very weird, sketchy situations. And even I feel like we're talking about it. Even though, like, dude, you know the arresting gear wire? The arresting gear wire that, like, if it snaps, it, kill, it like, chops you in half and, like, kills you? Arresting gear wire snaps. Look up. That's super rare. I will say, um, of all of the injuries you can get on the flight deck, the arresting gear wire snapping and killing you is like the the most rare that probably happens. But when you're standing there next to it, like literally a couple feet away and jets are landing and you know that that's possible, you're thinking about it. You're like, every time that jet lands at 100 miles an hour and pulls that arresting gear, you're like, damn, if that thing does snap, if I do happen to be here when that thing snaps, it's just going to come back and rip all of us in half. So very real, kind of rare. Arresting gear wire snaps. And uh, basically, for helo people, we're, we're on our combat deployment in the Middle East, and we have to get our birds ready. So we're, we're working right underneath our helicopters and on the telco in the helo hold, about 10 feet from where the jets are landing. So, you know, I'm just laying on the ground. Helos are kind of tucked away in the corner right behind where the jets are landing, uh, behind the island there, and they're doing their takeoffs and landings over there. The flight deck... If you have ever had a chance, if you've ever been on a flight deck of an aircraft carrier, it is so dangerous. It is like legitimately scary stuff. Uh, last night I talked about how dark it gets, but it also gets like there are jets taking off and landing, helicopters taking off and landing, planes being towed around by tow trucks, the tractors that kind of pull them into place. There are people doing work. There's heavy winds, heavy ship listing back and forth. And you've got jet blast and all these moving parts. The elevators are going up and down. The jet blast deflectors, the JBDs are going up and down. Uh, it's chaos. They won't even let you on there until you've done a whole PQS book, a whole a whole sign off book qualification just to walk onto the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. And you're still bound to mess that up, dude. I'm trying to explain to you guys, like, just pretend you're laying on the ground at about 10 feet from you. There's an F-18 trapping. There's landing. an F-18 landing 10 feet from you with the wires as you're laying on the ground working on your helicopter. And just, and as you... That's a good point too. What he's saying is there are these planes taking off and landing and you're doing work. You're doing maintenance and you're signing off on maintenance that you're saying has been done well enough that you're willing to bet your life on it. You're willing to bet the lives of the pilot and air crew and passengers of that helicopter that you've done your job. And there are jets and helicopters taking off and landing all around you. I've done maintenance on a helicopter that's still on with the rotor blade still spinning. I went in there and fixed a wire. I went in there and fixed the wire on a helicopter still spinning, put it all back together, plugged the box back in, turned it back on, made it work, and then got it signed off by an inspector. And then that plane flew again. That is stressful. Like you, you had better do your job right or else those people are going to die. And you're, you know, 19 years old, 20 years old, and they're putting their life in your hands to do that. Stressful stuff. You're learning to learn. Uh, you're on the flight deck, dude. And you always see these videos of the wire snaps, wire snaps. So that's just like, that's daily. That's every day. That's, you just get used to it, dude. That's just every day. You're in the helo hold. You're like 10, 15 feet from where all the jets are landing 24-7. Boom, 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 boom. And you're just right there and you get used to it, bro. 
You're like, all right, if this wire snaps, I'm probably gonna die or like get chopped up or I'm gonna lose my legs or something, dude. Lit. Pretty rare. And like, I always had plans. I'm like, if I hear like a crazy noise, I'm like, if I hear a crazy noise or if I see the wire about to snap, I don't know. I was like, I'm gonna jump up on the tail cone of the, of the helicopter. I'm gonna like block it. <laughs> you know, I had, I had like exit <laughs> strategies, you know, to avoid that shit. But like, uh, the only people that understand that would be the ABEs, the gear dogs, because like I was right next to the gear dogs where the one, two, three, four wires are, that's where the helo hold is, or the ABHs by the angle or the six pack. There's like very few people in the world that can like relate to that stuff on the flight deck, dude. And like even I feel bad, weird talking about it. And it's known as one of the most dangerous jobs in the world and in the Navy. Let me tell you a quick story about the, something that happened on the flight deck once. When I was on my second deployment, uh, and a lot of stuff always happens on the flight deck. When I was on my second deployment, my direct supervisor, he was also an AT. He was the same job as me. He was the second class and I was the third class. He was my you know, teacher. I'm on my first helicopter deployment. My first deployment was a ship's company. This is my first helicopter debt deployment. We're out there. We're on the flight deck and the helo is landing and there's this giant crate. This giant wooden box weighs a thousand pounds and it wasn't strapped down to the deck. So the helo flies over. It's got all this rotor wash, this extremely powerful wind that it's blowing underneath. If you've been ever around a helo, you feel that rotor wash, the, the wind being forced down by the helo. It's the, that is the same wind that's lifting the helicopter up, right? You're feeling the force of the helicopter lifting up. It's being pushed down on you. So this giant box, you know, eight feet tall, 10 feet wide, a thousand pounds, gets blown over by the helo and it falls over onto right where we are. And my direct supervisor, it falls on his leg and breaks his leg. And he's trapped underneath it. Had to get it lifted off of him, pull him out off the flight deck inside where we figured out his leg was broken. And he goes flying off the ship. And I become the lead AT. And I had no idea what I was doing. I just had to figure it out. Uh, so that's just one one example of an injury on the flight deck. That was that was unexpected. That was like our first month on deployment. And then somebody else had to fly out to replace him because we needed our full 12 man debt. So somebody went out to replace him. But for a while, I was the only AT on, out there, and uh, and that was my first uh, helo injury that I saw on that uh, on that deployment. So let's get back into the video. Besides naval special warfare, dude, or FMF corpsman. There's like literally two jobs: FMF corpsman and then Navy SEALs. And then, boom, Navy flight deck. And then especially for me, being an LSE, and then Hilo, we're like, right, if anything goes wrong, if anything, if the jets land wrong, a wire snaps, there's been rounds that were shot, we misfired, you know, 50 cal rounds. Um, one, of, one of our freaking air crewmen misfired the, our 50 cal, the freak, and it shot. Right through the helicopter, dude. And if you, if you, it could have shot right at any of us. But luckily, it was pointing this way, and went, I think, up and out instead of like that way. But you know how many times the 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 guns are pointed at us and shit. Like I'm standing in front of Hellfire missiles as the landing signalman. You know, I'm recovering the helicopters. And it's so what he's saying is the LSC, he's standing right there in front of the helicopters. It's taking off and landing, and it'll also do this a yaw turn. It'll turn in place, and as it does, he's going to be getting flagged by the Hellfires, which could misfire, the 50 cal or the 240s under pintle mounts out there that could misfire, as well as, and a lot of people don't think about this, as well as like the FLIR system, which has these very powerful lasers that you don't want to be getting hit with, uh, and if they if they laze you, then that could hurt you too, especially like in and around your face area. Oh, you don't want that. So just something to think about. There's all these, these dangers that you don't really think about until you're in that situation yourself. Like if you could be sitting there looking at an LSE do his job and go, oh yeah, you know, no big deal. But then you put yourself in that position. You all of a sudden start to see the hazards for yourself because you realize that those things are pointed at you. LSE, no joke, not an easy job. If you're in Navy LSE, good for you. Shout out to the LSEs. That is, that is hardcore. That's a tough duty, especially for usually a junior sailor taking on all this extra, extra responsibility in addition to their job. It's like, dude, even I feel weird talking about how, like, dude, it's like extreme hypervigilance, what it does to you. 
it's like now it's like everything is just extreme hyper vigilance for everything it's like it takes a while to unpack that dude because you live that for years and years and years and years and years that's just like your normal life up there on the flight deck you know i did that for a couple years dude and i did that in the middle east in the persian gulf for like the last combat deployment and i feel like even we're talking about my issues so i can't imagine people that have you know legit anxiety and ptsd and shit just from like normal navy jobs are stressful dude and like how can even they feel comfortable talking about it if even i feel weird talking about my shit dude a lot ptsd is a spectrum right so we gotta we gotta res respect what what you're saying when you say ptsd you could have PTSD from, you don't have to be in the military to have PTSD. You don't have to be in combat to have PTSD. People get PTSD from car accidents, from nearly drowning, from, from fire. Like any, any traumatic event can give you PTSD. We, because of the post 9-11 generation of the military, we associate PTSD with combat. And yes, that's a very common reaction to have after having been in combat that hyper vigilance that hyper anxiety those flare-ups out of nowhere you just feel like you're back in that situation your heart's racing like reality starts to distort that extreme kind of ptsd from combat is very real very common okay all this other type of ptsd any sort of traumatic event like i remember being a stretcher bearer when i was an airman on the aircraft carrier for a, an mm1 who was a uh, badly injured on our ship and he ended up dying and doing stretcher bearer to get him up to, uh, which I, you know, I barely ended up seeing him, barely ended up dealing with him, but being stretcher bearer for taking him out there, that was sad when I'm 19 years old, uh, carrying somebody who's badly injured and going to die. Um, all these kind of small traumatic events can start to wear on a person. They can, they can be cumulative. Uh, so I, I do want to be clear that PTSD is a spectrum. It can be caused by any Type, any type of event does not have to be military. We do associate it with combat very commonly because that's the post 9-11 generation thinking that we have. Uh, and it's a very real thing, but it doesn't mean it's exclusively related to combat. So if he's been, if somebody has been in the military and they served in, in any regard, they could have experienced a traumatic event directly associated with their military service that is giving them symptoms of PTSD, uh, flashbacks, panic attacks, anxiety, heart racing, guilt, extreme guilt, guilt, uh, feeling of impending doom, stuff like that. I have a lot of that, those feelings too. I, I suffer with that as well. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of feeling like I'm all of a sudden gonna like get in trouble for things that I've done. Like, you know, you, we were out there killing people. And now sometimes I just have an all of a sudden like attack of like, oh my God, I can't believe that we did that. Like, was that bad or something? Like, am I in trouble? It's just out of nowhere, like out of the blue. And, uh, and and I, and I totally, if you do experience these types of symptoms, we might joke and be like, whatever, dude, you were on the aircraft carrier, get over it. Where were you? Uh, a yeoman or like it's, we can make jokes, but I want to be clear right now, my position, if somebody says that they're experiencing PTSD symptoms from the military service, regardless of what they did in the military, I respect that and believe that until I have reason otherwise to, I'm always going to assume that that's true, that that's real and see what we can do to help that person. Because I, 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 I just think it's, it's, I've been there in a, a, a very, very vast difference of circumstances from Iraq, Afghanistan to at sea. I have been easily as scared at sea as I've ever been in Iraq or Afghanistan. I'll tell you that. Um, so with that being said, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know, I, I totally acknowledge the reality of this as somebody who's been in both situations. So if you have any doubt or question as to the legitimacy of this, then, uh, let me put that to bed. It's definitely a real thing. Even they feel comfortable talking about it. If even I feel weird talking about my shit, dude. And you know where I slept? It's like, dude, I literally slept right below the three wire. So like when I'm trying to go to sleep at night, I slept right below the flight deck where the jets trap. So it's like a bus, dude, hitting a brick wall. As you're like sleeping, you're trying to go to sleep. And then you're working all day and you're up there on the flight deck working. And like I said, I'm 10 feet, I'm five, 10 feet from where the jets are trapping, laying on the ground, dude, or standing by the tail cone, right by the foul, uh, where the. 
really quick where he's talking about, I, and I just want to like, just, you know, add as much pertinent information to this as possible. We're talking about where he works. If you take one step backwards in the wrong spot, like just think about, just try to pay attention for the rest of the day, right? Wherever you are in the world, the rest of the day, if it's the nighttime where you are tomorrow, how many times do you just take a step backwards without thinking about it? Have you ever been in a Walmart or a grocery store and you've taken a step backwards into somebody and you're like, oh, sorry, I didn't you know, think about that. You take a step backwards on an aircraft carrier, you're likely to get killed. Like there's a, there's a, a thousand spots on an aircraft carrier flight deck where you take that one step backwards, you're going to get hurt or killed. Uh, that's, the, that's the realistic dangers of being up there. You got to really be paying attention to what you're doing. Our line is about to run out and recover the, the helo. There's like many, there's little, very few people in the world though that can identify or that understand that dude, very small. So like it's, it's sketchy, it sucks dude. For like people in the Navy and like uh, aircraft, like flight deck, aircraft carrier shit. Cause like uh, nobody can relate. Not many people can relate. And like I said, if you have- Really quick, another big thing about PTSD is and military experience and getting out of the military. Somebody last night on the show asked, is it hard to transition out of the military? What he's saying here about very few people can relate. Not only is it possible that on an aircraft carrier, the people below decks can't even relate with the people on the flight deck. Like people on the ship, look at the people from the flight deck and they're like, oh, they're so gross. Look at them. They're filthy. Don't let them into the galley. Don't let them down here to eat. They need to go clean up first. Like, are you like, what? What an, oh man, I wanted to punch every person who said we were too dirty to come down and eat after working on the flight deck. Ooh. And then you get these bag lunches, you get bag lunches up on the flight deck and it's not even the food they're serving at the galley. It's like the cooks go out of their way to put in worse food for a bag lunch. You get a juice carton, which I've never even seen on the ship. I have never even seen these juice cartons on a ship except for in a bag lunch and a virtually inedible piece of fruit, and then a bologna sandwich, which is two pieces of white bread with a piece of bologna. If you're lucky, there's a piece of cheese. And that's it. And then that's your lunch. Uh, and four ounces of juice. And it's like, just put the food that you already made into like a container for me, or even in a cup, and give me a spoon. Like, it's... Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent, but... Issues people like are stressed out from like just normal jobs. And how can they talk about it, dude? They probably feel like, dang, I really can't talk about it because, like, dude, I don't know. It's like a masculinity. It's like a masculinity thing. It's weird. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, though, bro. Like I said, um, I saw the Reddit post. I saw the Reddit post from that chief talk about PTSD and stuff from sailors, loud noises, just living on the ship. And I'm like, dude, bet. Let me try to explain to these people, like, how maybe we can, you know, flight deck, the flight deck workers, especially what I did on the flight deck, it's like extreme hypervigilance PTSD, bro. It's just like, it's like, uh, I wish it wasn't like a competition, bro. Like my, my PTSD is better than yours. It's like, it's like a weird, I don't know. It's just weird, bro. It's weird. I wish it wasn't like that, but it is, I don't know. If it will, hopefully it changes, dude. One, I don't know if it'll, it'll probably never change. Actually, it's just how it is. It's not a competition, though. I wish people knew it wasn't a competition. It's just different. This is different, dude. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I would not wish it on anybody. All right, later. It's true. Yo, yo. It's true. Uh, it does seem like there is a, uh, a, a, if somebody says they have PTSD from being on a ship, then somebody who was in Iraq or Afghanistan goes, you don't have real PTSD. I have real PTSD. You know, I got shot at, you know, I was in an, I, my Vic got hit by an ID and the driver got killed. You know, it's not that, and I'm, I'm not saying that, uh, that I don't agree that there's, you know, worse moments and, and better moments, but every person is different. Some people experience trauma differently. You know, some people might be way more affected psychologically by something than somebody else. Uh, some people might go through years of combat and never, you know, experience symptoms of PTSD. Just, they love that shit. Uh, and some people might be in combat once and just go 
oh man, that really jacked me up. That was like not what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's, and it's, and it's all real. It's not, I wouldn't discredit anybody unless they give me reason to. There's definitely people out there trying to capitalize on that stuff. And I think that that's an asshole move. Uh, so if you're out there doing that, then you know, what's the problem? What's the problem? So that's JT suit. What's up guys. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video. If you want in the description down below, there's links where you can get scuttlebutt show merch and find out how you can support the channel. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you guys very soon.